Marilyn Manson. I'm here because my new album, Mechanical Animals, comes out tomorrow. Um, kind of the mark of a new age that I'm trying to make sure happens to bring some life back into rock and roll. I've just finished, uh, as you all know, the MTV Video Music Awards. Um, it wasn't very uh, dominated by rock and roll, but I think that uh, by next year maybe we'll be back on track and things won't be so geared towards R&B. There'll be a little bit more balance. Um, I think it's been uh, the music industry, along with conservative America, that has uh, followed the era of grunge music and made rock and roll less and less relevant. It's something that I focused on greatly while making this record, and I hope that um, what I did is something that everyone enjoys, and I'd like to share it with everyone, and that's why I'm here today. So I'm going to talk about the songs and what went into making this record and uh, what I'm trying to give to the fans with this album. Marilyn Manson has addressed the nation and now for the first time ever the nation is going to address him right back all live right here we're joined by some of his disciples and detractors they've swarmed our studio and we've taken over Times Square to challenge Marilyn of course I'll just be the medium guy I'm not gonna challenge anybody uh, you guys will have a half an hour right here it'll be a heated half an hour sort of a battle of beliefs if you will Matt Pinfield is out in Times Square we're gonna check out uh, how the mobs are doing out there in just a little bit if you guys are at home you want to get involved you can it's 888-311 43, 43, we are live in New York right now. Now, it's no secret that Marilyn Manson has stirred up some controversy, but if you're not sure why or you're just too embarrassed to ask somebody, have a look at this. Sick. Crazy. Out there. A person's worth is measured by not only how many people love them, but how many people hate them. Over the past several years, there's been a marked increase in the number of exceptionally violent... I think our music is the release of aggression. Hateful. I speak about hate, and I show the reflection of hate. Racist. If I hold up a picture and people call me a racist, then that's what they're feeling inside themselves. Anti-woman songs that are not only out in the market, but in many cases are topping the charts. I think our fans are some of the only few intelligent people in America, and everybody else are the ones that are missing the point. I think Marilyn Manson is adult entertainment. I don't think teenagers like under 18 should be there anyway. We're going to shut you down because what you propose is not uplifting. It's not helpful. It doesn't advance the culture. I think if anyone was afraid of what might go on at a Marilyn Manson concert, they should take their kid with them. Straight from the main stage of this year's Lilith Fair, here's Marilyn Manson! People gravitate towards sensationalism, uh, and the media feeds it. And uh, you can either be manipulated by it, or you can make it part of your art. And I just try and make it part of what I do. All right. All right. Very nice. You can keep it going. Please welcome Marilyn Manson, his bandmates Twiggy Ramirez and Pogo. Thank you guys for being here. Well, thank you for coming back. Oh, thanks Actually, last for time everybody you were here, showing up again. You said uh, that you'd come back around the release of the new record. It's nice of you to come back. Twiggy, welcome. Pogo, welcome. Uh, have you had a chance to see uh, back the performance from the Video Music Awards? Well, of how it looked on TV. I saw it live the first time, and it seems like you guys changed it around the second time. So I, I changed the lyrics a little bit, and uh, we had some special performers on stage, and it seemed like. What, like a little, what bit of, a little what fear. Got missed. 
Uh, well, the second time around, since there was such a big, silly okay. controversy about saying queers on stage, which wasn't a hateful word, it was just a commentary. So we uh, changed it to fags the second time to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys edited that out. But, um, and we also had the Goddess Bunny, this very amazing performance artist that's in the Dope Show video whose um, body is misshapen from birth, but she's an uh, amazing performer. Right. And I think everyone was afraid to show her because she didn't look like everyone else, but I think that's what makes her unique, and that's right. why we had her on stage. That's very cool. Um, I'm more interested to know uh, who your dressing room was near backstage, because you're, um, you're next to these people like Backstreet Boys and Puffy, all these people that we've talked about before you don't exactly, I'm sure, respect musically. What happened? What was the backstage vibe like? Um, I was actually upstairs, so I missed the whole thing, but, um, you know, I, I learned to respect people on different levels, you know. I, I think as long as someone's expressing themselves, you know, I can't hate them for it. Yeah. Um, the dope show, we're going to, um, actually, you know what, let's go back to 1997 to your Video Music Award performance, which we're going to show right here. Obviously drastically different from what we saw. As you look back at this, what do you think? Anything pop in your head? Well, this morning, Howard Stern said that my ass was good as it was last yeah. year <laughs> but um, you agree with that you know maybe i've been sitting around for a year so i'm ready to <laughs> that should mean your ass should be flatter from actually sitting in the studio yeah but uh, visually very different and we'll, we'll take a look absolutely right now. very different uh antichrist superstar was uh a very pointed album and uh it was a body of work that kind of represented uh the transformation that i went through from childhood till now and uh, it was a lot of a, a more of an angry record and uh, the result of that is mechanical animals you know that record changed me writing that book changed me and now i have a different uh, look on life i uh the numbness wore off and uh, now i'm starting to feel things on a different level right so it's a different kind of record um and great mind you we've listened to it, it comes out Thank tomorrow you. um paul hunter directed the video for the dope show this is sort of the public's first chance to take a look at your new image. Um, Heritage R&B video director primarily with Boys and Men, Missy Elliott, Mariah. Uh, Paul's on the phone, actually. Paul, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, guys? How's How you it going, Paul? How you doing, Manson? Good. It's funny, too, because some people call you Marilyn, some people call you Manson. Paul, would you have any reason why you refer to him as Manson, quickly? Uh, I like the way it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, how did you come to work with Marilyn Manson? How did this thing start with the dope show? Um, it was funny because I'd been wanting to work with him for a while, and um, he actually reached out to me. Um, I was at my production office, and I was listening to the record, and he reached out to me, and we, we talked and got together. Did you, uh, did you pitch a treatment, or, Marilyn, did you have an idea of what you wanted? This is a very important video. We collaborated. It was a very strong collaboration. Um, it's Billy what, Zane, isn't it? Yes. What I, what I liked about Paul is that he has a sense of greatness. Um, because sadly, rock music lacks a lot of creativity right now. And uh, R&B has, has more creativity. And Paul's videos are all very exciting. And uh, I wanted someone who could take uh, the metaphor of what the dope show is about, the alienation of rock stardom, the alienation of drug use, uh, Hollywood, and to make that into something like this, and I'm very, very pleased with what, mm -hmm. what he did. Will you work with Paul again? Absolutely. All right, very cool. And a great job, too. Great colors. Thanks. Paul, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, All Paul. right, we're going to take a break. Up next, the audience is going to have their way with Marilyn Manson. Ask some questions about the new record, Mechanical Animals, and anything else they want to ask him. We'll be right back with more Manson TV on MTV. <laughs>
in anticipation of the release of uh, the fourth record, Mechanical Animals, tomorrow. Ooh, There's okay. the crowd outside. Yeah, whose kid is that? That's crazy. Coming to a Manson event with your son? Kid. Oh, it's nuts. <laughs> Marilyn Manson, uh, Twiggy Ramirez and Pogo joining us here, and a group of people, a very diverse group in the room. What do you think of the setting of this room? I actually walked in and thought that one of these mannequins was you. I did too for a second. I was gonna have sex with it's it. It's like one of those real dolls. <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, kind of like the Springer show. It looks like I'm ready for it. Yeah. Like it. Well, <laughs> not in a bad way. I like the Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's flown across the room yet, but fight, maybe. <laughs> you're right. We've got ourselves in this band, in this group, uh, Christian Rockstar, some uh, diehard groupies, and editor of a very popular Marilyn Manson uh, website, the youth pastor. We're gonna take some questions from them now. Starting off with Evan Moore. I believe he's in charge of the website. Evan, where are you? Evan, how are you? I'm fine, fine. Do um, you have a microphone, new... Evan? I can hardly hear you. Yeah, I got a mic. Okay, good. Your new album, uh, Mechanical Animals, due out tomorrow, symbolizes a lot about drugs. E and even in the booklet itself, um, do you feel that the media associate your album with drugs a lot more than usual? Well, the, the album uh, has to do with... Uh, drugs is often used as a metaphor besides the obvious term. And... Uh, while writing it and after going through the transformation of Antichrist Superstar, I began to feel again emotions for the first time, strangely enough. And the more I began to feel, the more and more the world started to look like mechanical animals. And that was the theme that started running through that. And, uh, and I was kind of studying in my life and in other people around me, and particularly in Hollywood, how we numb ourselves and make ourselves less human and more mechanical. And uh, I mean, if they want to attach to the drug thing, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that, that's that been part of my life, you know. It's not something that I hide or, or, or deny. What do you attribute that sort of feeling again? It's, it's probably worse than uh, what I felt last year. You know, I think I put myself through a lot of physical pain to make up for, for no emotional pain. Yeah. And uh, that's what a lot of people told me, kind of in retrospect, is that when I moved to Hollywood a year ago, I started to repair myself in a lot of ways. And this record lyrically documents that repair. Jeff Hamilton is here, an actual youth pastor. Jeff, what's your question for Marilyn? Actually, one of the things that uh, I admire about this whole process is, has been your transparency from early interviews through these albums, the book, and uh, so you're talking about metaphors being uh, uh, in this particular album and, and a return to realness and feeling in your life what is that what does that cost you then uh emotionally what does that cost you uh relationally to move from that place of numbness to a place of uh, feeling and interaction and processing with people and in your life that's a long question well right. i mean strange strangely <laughs> enough uh it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. You know, I set out to be something superhuman, something the greatest thing I could be with Antichrist Superstar. And what I didn't figure into that was uh, vulnerability was a part of it. And that was something that I was not acknowledging. You know, I didn't want to feel. Now that I am, it's, it's uh, I'm sure everybody's been through it, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's what life is. And uh, it's crazy. People it's love hard. you it's now. Like being, it's like a rebirth. It's like being an infant. Everything's bright. Everything's very painful. And uh, so in some ways, I've gotten back my innocence that I was looking for, you know. You get some breasts and everybody loves you. <laughs> um, you can't hate them. Yeah, hell no. Especially yours. You look better than anybody else's. Um, Mechanical Animals also um, sort of seems like it would uh, entail these people who, who do follow, and now that you're sort of aware of that. Um, it's interesting because we have some diehard fans, Allison and Jeanette, is it, here, who have carved Marilyn Manson, and you've, I'm sure met them before yeah they're friends of mine so how do you yeah. take to someone who would follow you to the point of self-mutilation is that sort of contradicting your own message of this don't follow don't follow the status quo it depends because I can't uh, say exactly what they're thinking but to me when I look at them and I consider them friends uh, it's their way of identifying you know their way of being a part of uh, something because the rest of the world has shut them off in some way um, and it's their way of expressing themselves, and, and I'm not one to judge how people express themselves. Right. Is there any, this is going way too nice, is there anybody here who's not a fan? Anybody have the balls to say that? You're right here with them. <laughs> <laughs> not you, Pogo. <laughs> uh, yes, um, my name is Rob Hayes. I'm a, a senior at Princeton University, um, and I'm also the president of Campus Crusade for Christ um, there on campus. Um, I'd have to say I'm not necessarily a fan of, of your whole message. Um, 
But again, this was something that I found interesting is that if um, in my own intellectual pursuits, um, I find myself and happiness and joy in being a Christian, um, yet you preach that you know there is no God and that God does not exist. Um, I mean, that's, is that that's hypocritical? Not, that's that's I mean, half true. You know, I, I'm more if I uh, against, myself. against the guilt that Christian, Christianity imposes, but um, I think that God exists in art and there's more spirituality in music than you can find in religion a lot of times, but I'm not one to condemn anyone's pursuit of God or, or happiness or anything like that. I just think that uh, we're raised to feel very guilty for being ourselves, and, and that's a large part of what Christianity stands for. But I think there's great and valuable things uh, in the Bible. I, if anything, Antichrist Superstar was a lot of parallels with my life with uh, someone like Lucifer. Mechanical animals has a lot more parallels between me and Jesus Christ. I so, you know, I've found a different way to relate to things. But that doesn't mean that I'm uh, going to be a born-again Christian. It just means that I can find some some valid points in your religion. I don't think that everything about it is wrong. That's been a huge misconception, too, since day one. People thought that you were out there, like, protesting Sunday school. You've never done that. <laughs> I kicked I kicked the Sunday school teacher. Actually, when I was in Who hasn't? When I was in Christian school, I had these things made out of uh, a ruler and a rubber band with crayons. Yeah. And we were shooting them at each other and uh, the principal's wife, who was the the Bible teacher, I had it under my desk and I accidentally shot her in the crotch. And <laughs> so I have reacted violently towards those sort of authorities. Hence the song Reflecting God, probably. <laughs> Great song that I miss, actually. All right, we're going to take a break. When we get back, uh, we're going to check with Matt Pinfield, who you can hear the crowd out there in Times Square. We'll check in with them, talk about some of the symbolism, too, of the new record, Mechanical Animals, out tomorrow. More with Marilyn Manson. Those cops have the wrong color. When we get back. Yes, they do. They should be paying. Diverse crowd now, and now it looks like it's like golf. We're back on MTV, Manson TV. Golf used to just be like old white guys, and now since Tiger Woods, it's just this broad group. The last time you were here, there's it's, it's don't talk to me about sports. The, the, I know, but I know that I'm not going to making a metaphor here, I'm making an analogy. Uh, now, okay. now, like everybody's coming out to see you, like the little kid, that infant, cops, yeah, they love you, queers. All of them. <laughs> uh, we're back. Uh, Trigger Mirrors. I love it. Pogo over here as well. We're going to go right to Matt Pinfield. He's out love there. everybody. Amongst the crowd. Matt. Not Thanks a lot, Carson. How you doing? We're here with this amazing amount of fans in Times Square for Marilyn Manson. Excited about him being here. Michael, you wanted to ask Marilyn the question, what is it? Uh, Marilyn, when you become president, who's going to be the first person to give you oral sex in the White House? <laughs> Twiggy. <laughs> Won't that be a joyous day? You know, the president's staying across the street from our hotel. I think that we're going to go over there and see if he's... Are you really? I got a cigar. Uh, we'll give him oral sex. Why not? Yeah, what the hell? Take a DV cam and tape it for us. Thank you, Matt. All right, Carson. All right, where's, thanks. All right, where's uh, Aaron as a Christian artist who's here? How's it going? What's your question from Aaron? Striper? <laughs> no. Striper's awesome. Those guys from Striper, Striper. do drugs. Yeah. I did drugs with those guys from Striper. Yeah. Those guys, those guys are mostly. Yeah, what are you guys are doing? Nah, no, man. Striper's the biggest influence. It wasn't for you guys. It wasn't for Striper. I don't think Aaron's the in most Striper. satanic band ever. But he's what he represents Striper. No. I'm not Aaron, what's you in? Like, you guys want me in. What's your question? Right, what's what's your I, just, I saw your new record that a symbol of Omega a lot mm -hmm. on there. And uh, I noticed that you alluded to yourself as an Omega or whatever. And all I know of, is, of the Omega is that. God said he's the Alpha and the Omega. What, what do you mean by that when you say that? Very much? biblical references. Yeah, you know. biblical. There's a lot of biblical references still on this record and a lot of numerological references too, but the Omega symbol kind of represents the final stage of what was set forth on Antichrist Superstar. So this is kind of the final evolution of 
what whatever Before it is that I, I am. Kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, again, there there is there is uh, some allusions to uh, Christ as well in this record. Yeah. Just looking what? at things from a flip side. Wait, we got another question over there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead, man. Image has always gone through like these changes, and obviously, God through art is something very personal to you. I was wondering, um, do you see your art going a certain direction? Is it more spontaneous? Like, can you foresee some of the changes that might come in like the next two years, or is it just something that comes within on like a? Well, I think we've we've really grown as a band, and um, we're kind of looking at this record as a, as a new beginning, some you know a starting point. A lot of people would think that. Antichrist Superstar was the most that we could do. This was our pinnacle, but it's really just the beginning for us, and uh, uh, it, it's hard to say. I think we're just gonna always kind of evolve. Right. I'm inspired there by what I see around. We're gonna go right over to we're gonna go right over to Gene. Gene, hi, hi. great. Did you, have, you have a mic, okay? okay? Oh yeah, I love your new look. It totally is Thanks, great. Sir. Like it's everything about indulgence and glitter glam. I'm so glad it's back, and you guys are bringing it back. But um, regarding like numerology, you were talking about that. Your new font is like using a one and a five, and then the release date's the 15th, and there allegedly are 15 tracks on the album. Can you elaborate on? It's also January 5th is my birthday. I'm gonna be 30 this year. That's half of my uh, oh, age. Wow. And we, uh, the address of MTV is 1515 Broadway. <laughs> huh? Uh, the number f when uh, Marilyn Manson also equals six. Um, there's a lot of different things, but if you look for coincidences, you know, you'll start realizing that there are no such thing as coincidences, that everything has a purpose. That's what I figure. I, I, hey, I just have a follow-up to what Hold this on, guy Gene said. Hold on, people yelling out here. It is yeah. a Springer show, for crying out loud. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, make this quick, because we don't have much right, time. I just have like, a follow-up to what this guy was saying. I mean, I mean, you know, I respect you guys. I think it's great. You're, you're having your big day and all that. But there are tons of bands that have been doing this whole glitter glam thing way before Manson ever came on the scene. Been. Yeah, and I respect these guys. I'm glad they're, you know, they're making it. But it's like this whole rock star thing today is not about unity, and it kind of sucks. There's a lot of fucking some bands and, and there's no more unity anymore instead it's just this selfish like you know like empire you know for each each it's it's all right that's it, about that's all i, have I don't what think do you say i don't think that they're you know i would lend a hand to any band that i saw putting as much effort into what they do as what we do you know and i've always had underground bands come on tour with us and uh you know it, that's what rock stardom is about is is about uh self-preservation you know if anybody wants to be a rock star, they've got to try hard enough. You know, they're not going to get it handed to them. And you got to look good doing it. That's for sure. We're yeah, out of time. Say, you know, we'll, hold on. We'll chat out there. I'm you look good, brother. Go for yours. Artist, I want to know who's right. your fashion designer. That's yes. what I want to know. Nobody know that. That's all the time we have. Thank you. We'll continue this. Off as long here. as you wear that Virgin Mega Show you are in New York, right. you can check out that we're doing a signing. Mechanical Animals comes out tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Right. Appreciate it. Marilyn Manson, put your American photo. Thanks for watching Manson TV. Go on.